Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Chemical Adda. In today's video, we will understand the difference between two important methods used in distillation column design, the McCabe Thieler method and the Ponchom Savarit method. So, the McCabe Thieler method and the Ponchom Savarit method are two graphical methods used for designing distillation columns. These two methods also help us to develop the relationship between the number of trays, liquid vapor ratios, and product compositions. So basically these two methods are used to calculate number of trays and to design distillation column. If you want more details on these two methods, I have already uploaded the detailed videos. And if you haven't watched the previous video on the McCabe Thieler method and Ponchom Savarit method, make sure to check it out for a better understanding or you can find the link to that video in the description box below. Though, both methods serve similar purposes. But, these two methods differ from one another in a number of significant ways, such as applications, the type of graphical representation, which is used to determine the number of trays, and the complexity of the systems they can handle. So, in today's video, we will understand these differences in detail, so that we can know when to use each method, and why one might be preferred over the other in certain situations. So the first point is, the McCabe Thieler method is designed for binary distillation only. This means that, this method is best suited for binary distillation, which involves the separation of just two components. On other hand, the Ponchong Savarit method can be used for both binary and multi-component distillation. So, the Ponchong Savarit method can handle binary distillation, but it also works for multi-component systems. So if you're dealing with more than two components, this method is a better choice. Now next point is, key assumptions of the methods. So, in the McCabe Thieler method we assumes, ideal stages, constant molar overflow, and a constant relative volatility. Hence in the McCabe Thieler method, we assumes ideal stages, which means we are assuming no heat losses and perfect mixing. Constant molar overflow and constant relative volatility. Then about Ponchong Savarit method. So, the Ponchong Savarit method is more flexible. In this method we uses mass and energy balances, and this method can handle both ideal and non-ideal systems. Then the next point for differentiation is, the type of system that can handle. This is the one of the most significant point, for differentiation between the McCabe Thieler and Ponchong Savarit methods. So McCabe Thieler method, handle only binary distillation, which is two component system. But, Ponchong Savarit method can also handle, multi-component distillation system. And hence, this method is versatile for systems involving more than two components, and can be used in more complex separations. Now next point is, how these two methods differ in the graphical representation, to determine the number of trays needed for a distillation column. So McCabe Thieler method uses, a simple XY diagram, which is also called liquid vapor diagram. Hence, in the McCabe Thieler method, we use XY diagram, where the X axis represents the liquid composition, and the Y axis represents the vapor composition. And that's why, XY diagram also known as, the liquid vapor composition diagram. In contrast, the Ponchom Savarit method uses, two separate diagrams. The first is, a compositions diagram, which is similar to the McCabe Thieler XY diagram, where we can analyze the liquid and vapor phases. And second is, enthalpy diagram, which consider the energy balances of the system. This diagram helps us to calculate heat duties, and which also provides, a more detailed study of the thermodynamic behavior in the system. Then the next point is, graphical representation complexity. So the graphical representation of the McCabe Thieler method is, much simpler. Because, in this method we use only XY diagram. That's why, this method is quick and easy to apply, and it also doesn't require a lot of additional data, or complicated calculations, like Ponchong Savarit method. Hence in comparison, the graphical representation of Ponchong Savarit method is, more complex. Because in this method we have to plot two combined diagrams, one for composition, and another for enthalpy. And it also involves additional calculations for mass and energy balances, hence this makes, the process more challenging. 
Next point is equilibrium curve. In McCabe Taylor method, we use equilibrium curve. So in the McCabe Taylor method, the equilibrium curve is used to represent the relationship between the liquid and vapor compositions in a binary system. But in Ponchong Savarit method, we use equilibrium curve but extend it to multi component systems. Next point is operating lines. In McCabe Taylor method, there are two operating lines. First one is rectifying line, which represents the relationship between the vapor and liquid in the rectifying section. And second line is stripping line, which represents the relationship between the vapor and liquid in the stripping section. But, as we know, in Ponchong Savarit method, both compositions and enthalpy diagrams involve. Hence, this method does not simply depend on simple operating lines. Rather, it uses an additional strategy that includes both material and energy balances across a number of different components. Now next point is reflux ratio consideration. This is an important point in distillation column design where the reflux ratio is the ratio of the liquid returned to the column versus the liquid withdrawn as the product. So, in McCabe Thieler method, the reflux ratio determined graphically from the XY diagram. This method help us to quickly estimate the number of trays required for a specified reflux ratio, which is a key parameter in optimizing the separation. On the other hand, the Ponchong Savarit method requires a more complicated approach to the handling of energy and reflux, especially in multi-component distillation systems. Then next point is the stages calculation. In McCabe Thieler method, stages are calculated by stepping off on the XY diagram. This means that, in the McCabe Thieler method, the number of theoretical stages is estimated by stepping off stages on the XY diagram using the operating lines and equilibrium curve. But in the Ponchong Savarit method, stages are calculated by stepping off on two combined diagrams. So, in Ponchong Savarit method, instead of just using one diagram, we use two diagram, a composition and an enthalpy diagram. And by combining these two diagrams, we can estimate the number of stages more accurately for multi-component systems and non-ideal mixtures. Now next point is flexibility. So, the McCabe Thieler method is less flexible. Because the McCabe Thieler method is limited to binary mixtures. And it works great for simple systems. On other hand, Ponchong Savarit method is much more flexible because it can handle both binary and multi-component systems and is suitable for non-ideal mixtures as well. Then the next point is limitation. So, the limitation of the McCabe Thieler method is it cannot handle non-ideal mixtures, azeotropes or multi-component systems. On other hand, the limitation of Ponchong Savarit method is it is more complex to construct and requires enthalpy data. Next point is advantages. So, the McCabe Thieler method is simple, fast, and well suited for binary systems. On other hand, Ponchong Savarit method is accurate for multi component and non ideal systems and accounts for energy balances. Then, the last point is how these methods handle non idealities. So, as we know, McCabe Thieler method is limited to ideal systems. However, when the system is non ideal, for example, when there are azeotropes or the components interact in complex ways, this method doesn't work as well and adjustments are needed. But Ponchong Savarit method is better at handling non-ideal systems. Hence on the other hand, the Ponchong Savarit method is can handle non-ideal systems. That's why it is more flexible and can handle deviations from Rolle's law, azeotropes and complex behavior in multi-component systems. This makes it a better choice for more complicated distillation processes. In short we can say that the McCabe Thieler method is perfect for binary mixtures where the system behaves ideally and the separation is relatively simple. It's easy to use and provides quick estimates for the number of trays and reflux ratios. However, the Ponchong Savarit method is more flexible and can handle multi-component mixtures and non-ideal systems. It's more detailed and works well when energy balances need to be considered. So, if you're dealing with a simple system, the McCabe Thieler method is the way to go. But if you're working with complex systems, the Ponchong Savarit method will give you a more accurate and comprehensive result.
So, thank you for watching today's comparison between the McCabe Thieler and Ponchong Savarit methods. I hope this video will help you to clarify when to use each method and how they differ. If you think this video is helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. So keep watching. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.